Hey guys, Storm Chaser Norman Smith here. Today we're going to be talking about 0 to 3 kilometer cape and surface vorticity, is also known as G code. Uh, a lot of times I've been talking about this in my videos or in my live streams, but I really don't go over it well, or if I do, uh, it's on live streams. And a lot of people don't tune into live streams, it's mostly I, I do videos instead of live streams. So I might as well, I thought I might as well just create a video on uh, this product that I talk about all the time. And it's really also helpful to forecast for uh, Tornado Genesis as well. So if you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications, and let's get this started. So I went ahead and just drew up a quick diagram here just to show you guys on how this works. So 0 to 3 kilometer cape is pretty much just the measurement of instability in between the surface and the 3 kilometer region of our atmosphere. So let's just go ahead and draw up our thunderstorm here. Essentially 0 to 3 kilometer cape, uh, you know, think of it pretty much like a vacuum. Um, you know, the more instability you have, or the more convective available potential energy you have, and typically I like to um, look at values at least 100 joules per kilogram. The more instability we have, the more uh, the more uh, air will rise into your thunderstorm. Essentially, you know, think of it like a vacuum. If we don't have any instability at all at the surface, you're not going to get a lot of warm air to rise into your mesocyclone and up to your up through your updraft base. However, if we have a lot of instability, you're going to have a lot more uh, buoyant warm air to you know rise. Let's talk about surface vorticity. So surface vorticity uh, pretty much just acts like this counterclockwise spin down at the surface. Again, hence the name surface vorticity. However, if you do not have surface vorticity, and if you have zero to three kilometer cape, uh, tornado genesis, uh, it, it, it's, it's not gonna happen. You're gonna have to have uh, surface vorticity and somewhat of uh, low level instability to get this going. So let's say for example, let's say if we have over 100 joules per kilogram, a zero to three kilometer cape, and we have a, some surface vorticity, whether that be from you know, an outflow boundary or uh, enhanced low level shear from that day. Um, essentially, this, essentially what will happen is this warm air will begin to rise into the thunderstorm, but also the surface vorticity will begin to stretch into the thunderstorm, you know, and now you can kind of see how, uh, you know, supercell thunderstorms, at least here in the Northern Hemisphere, get that counterclockwise uh, spin to them as, you know, this surface vorticity begins to stretch and go up throughout the vertical column of the updraft. So that's just pretty much just how it works. Um, again, think of it like a vacuum cleaner. If you got no, if you got nothing to sweep up, then what's kind of the purpose of a vacuum cleaner, right? You know, again, think of the zero to three kilometer cape, and think of the updraft. You know, kind of like the vacuum in itself. So we're going to be looking at some case studies of uh, heightened zero to three kilometer cape and surface vorticity, and how well that can enhance tornado genesis. The first case study we're going to look at is the April twenty second, twenty twenty tornado or I should say local tornado outbreak in southern Oklahoma. Uh, this had uh, the Springer, Oklahoma tornado, for example. And this was, um, again, this is a really good example on how this cheat code uh, really plays a part in tornado genesis. So here at 16Z, we can see, here's our low pressure. You can see by the uh, wind, these little wind barbs, how they're turning counterclockwise. And you can kind of see uh, that the wind barbs are kind of indicating that the low pressure here right over the Red River region or right at this vorticity bullseye, that's where we can get a good idea on where our low pressure is. And you can see as it starts to progress further east into the day, you can see this huge low level instability uh, bullseye start to develop right along that I-35 corridor. And here's right at 22Z when tornadoes are already going in progress. You can see uh, the vorticity uh, bullseye highlighted in blue and the red uh, being the uh, the low level instability, kind of see how that overlays uh, one another, and that's what we call a bullseye, um, right where the zero to three kilometer cape and surface vorticity meets. So again, once you get once you 
are able to get those two going once you're being once you have a lot of surface instability for warm air to rise why you have you know a lot of surface vorticity at the surface to get stretched with that zero to three kilometer cape uh that is a recipe right there for tornado genesis again another simple case study um again right near that low pressure system of course low pressure systems will also aid in surface vorticity as well uh, i'd like to mention that as well We'll look at another case study here. This is from March 2nd, 2012. This is the big Ohio River Valley tornado outbreak uh, sequence. This is a 17Z. So again, starting at midday, as the day starts to progress, you can see a lot of, uh, we can see that more of that bullseye right there in southern Indiana, the Henryville area. Uh, just again, right around the time that the Henryville uh, Indiana EF4 happened, uh, we can start to see a big giant Cape bullseye as well as a surface vorticity bullseye right there across southern Indiana, the Louisville, Kentucky area. And it's kind of hard to see because sometimes the numbers are a little bit uh, displaced, but again, 150, 125, 0 to 3 kilometer Cape getting pushed up, and through, up, into, up into Kentucky and into Indiana. So we can also look at this from a, a sounding perspective as well. Here is the, uh, here's some data from the past uh, from this event. This is from the Henryville, Indiana area, actually a little bit south of there. So let me go ahead and get, let me go ahead and get a diagram of this and I'll show you uh, how to interpret this. Also, I'd like to mention a uh, big thanks to Cameron Nixon and the U.S. Tornadoes website for giving this us this information. So here is our skew T chart over here on the top left hand side uh, you can see this green line right here indicating our moisture and our red indicating essentially our temperature and of course you can start to see how these lines start to go from uh, you know kind of act like as a y-axis pretty much just shows the temperature and moisture profile as you start to go up into the atmosphere however this little dotted line this line right here that you can start to see uh, that I'm starting to mark is pretty much um, you know, in between those lines, it's pretty much your cape. Uh, again, your convective available potential energy. So anywhere, you know, in between this red and this hash line, that's just pretty much your instability throughout the atmosphere. In this sounding, we can also map out, uh, here's our one kilometer, here's our three kilometer region of the atmosphere. So we can also just draw a line on where these are, essentially. And you can see we have a lot of Cape right here in the low levels, 174 to be exact. So again, higher than that threshold of 100, or at least that minimum threshold of 100. So again, it goes to show you we have the 0 3 kilometer Cape, but we also have uh, the low level shear. Again, here's our, uh, here's our hodograph, pretty much just shows the turning uh, in the atmosphere. Um, but essentially, uh, just here at the low levels, pay attention right here to especially uh, to the zero to three kilometers. And again, you can start to see how, uh, you know, how this photograph essentially turns into the atmosphere. And here's another good way to visualize this in 3D and to look at these uh, wind barbs down here on uh, pretty much in between the skew T and the photograph chart. So down here at the surface, you can see here we have our uh, wind vector plot. Uh, we have some southerlies, uh, almost south-southwesterly winds. And uh, now as we start to go up, let's say, into the one-kilometer region, uh, we kind of get more dir directly into the southwest. And let's go up a little bit. Let's go up one more, up into the three-kilometer region. And you can see the winds kind of turn. You can see how the winds turn and how the hodograph shape is kind of, you know, kind of coming alive there, so to speak, um, you know, when you start to visualize it in the, that 3D format. So we have, so again, we have the low level shear in place. We have the zero three kilometer cape in place. And we also have the other things as well as the upper level dynamics. Here's our low pressure system. And also here's the instability more aloft into the atmosphere. We have our lapse rates as well. We'll also get into that in a later video. I'm not going to, you know, cram everything into one video. So again, this sounding pretty much just has it all, so to speak, including uh, the cheat code.
Here's another case study. This is from August 9th, 2021, the MCV day last year in Northern Illinois. So again, here's our cheat code, uh, cheat code map here on mesoanalysis. And here again, you can ma make out that MCV across Southern, so, um, excuse me, across Southern Wisconsin by noting the uh, vorticity bullseye here. And again, as we go out in time, we can start to see the low level instability start to take place. I'll just go ahead and a loop here going, but you can definitely see that bullseye here. Uh, we'll go ahead and stop it right here. Of 150 zero three kilometer cape, as well as uh, that vorticity lobe starting to extend further south associated with that MCV. And again, here's, here's eventually what that turned into. Is this right here. Again, this is the Sycamore, Illinois tornado. This is my advantage, looking uh, from the south. Oh, look, I'm sorry, excuse me, looking from the west. Again, this tornado was rated EF, high in EF1, could have been EF2, especially in these uh, little uh, suction vortices here at the beginning, if I can find them here real quick. Displayed a lot of suction vortices here at the surface, uh, and typically those suction vortices have uh, stronger winds than the parent tornado, or than the parent vortex, I should say. And also, we had the uh, east or the uh, the tornado. After that, this big giant cone, uh, multiple vortex tornado. See, look at make a right turn, make a right turn. Now go ahead and show you guys the vortex, yep. the multiple vortex characteristics. There's the there's those multiple vortex characteristics. And again, sometimes you'll have this big giant parent tornado. Uh, the main vortex of loft that's not really uh, fully condensed, and sometimes you'll get these little uh, sub, -vort sub vortex uh, sub vortices uh, that go around that parent circulation. So again, another explanation on how uh, zero three kilometer cape works. So a quick and general uh, general conclusion here. Again, zero three kilometer cape is pretty much just the Inst, you know the measurement of instability between the surface and three kilometer region of our atmosphere and again think of it like a giant vacuum uh, the more instability we have um, the more air that will get sucked up into uh, the more warm air that will get sucked up into uh, the updraft and that'll also main you know also have updraft maintenance along with it as well now also sustain again your updraft and your mesocyclone and overall, a good thing for uh, mesocyclones as well. Um, and again, surface vorticity, pretty much just your counterclockwise spin at the surface. Again, if you have the uh, 0 0.3 kilometer cape along with the surface vorticity, again, that vorticity will be stretched up into uh, the vertical, up into the updraft and through the mesocyclone. And that's how you can get, um, you know, tornado genesis to get going, essentially. Again, as long as you have, again, your low-level shear, and I'll just go ahead and draw it, uh, kind of how we diagrammed it earlier uh, on the uh, hodograph plot. As long as you have the turning here at the surface, and as long as you have the instability uh, for warm air to rise into the updraft base, you know, the more likely your tornado genesis is going to enhance. So, that, again, that is why cheat code is very important that's why i look at it uh almost every tor at every tornado chase um again if we again if we have a lot of this uh tornado uh, the the chance of tornadoes are going to increase more than likely uh well if we do not have any of this uh tornado chances are going to rapidly diminish so again there's a general overview of zero three kilometer cape and surface vorticity is also known as again what we call cheat code so again, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm sorry if I uh, stumbled with my words a little bit. I'm kind of doing this on the fly. I didn't write a script or anything for this. I kind of just wanted to make this video and publish it just, you know, just to hurry up and get it out there. I know some people have had questions about this. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoy, uh, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you want something else discussed, please let me know in the comments below. Again, we'll see you guys later. Take care.